The University of Venda is working in collaboration with, and funded by Capricorn District Municipality and United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, in the implementation of farming integrated waste to energy technology in the villages of Avon Ness, and Indermark, under Bloberg Local Municipality of Capricorn District Municipality in Limpopo Province. The project is one of the pilot projects meant to demonstrate how local challenges can be solved using locally available resources, creating opportunities for growth and development through appropriate application of science and technology, making it possible through science. The uh, project that we're involved with, uh, uh, with the University of Venda, is uh, a biogas project, in fact. Biogas being mainly the methane part, which is combustible, uh, which is a fuel, which is an energy source. So what we are involved with, with uh, the Venda University is for the Venda University to carry out one of the activities of our larger project. The larger project is uh, under a title, a long title called Promoting Organic Waste to Energy and Low Carbon Technologies in small, medium, and micro-scale enterprises and to accelerate biogas market development in South Africa. That is the totality of the project that we are looking at. There's a, a short uh, you know, title for it. We, 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 we call it Waste to Energy Biogas SA Project. That's the short version. What we are doing is, in essence, with uh, Venda University, is for Venda University to look after the domestic size of the biogas uh, units that uh, you know, we want to realize or to know if there is, there is a, a market for them in the rural setting. If for that market to be there or for, for, for biogas to be possible, there must be a desire by the you know, people who reside in rural areas at domestic level, at household level, to supplement their energy through uh, other than firewood. So the firewood part of it is what we're trying to remove from their equation so that they now depend on a renewable energy source, which is a waste source in this case, converting waste to energy through an anaerobic digestion process. In a small setting, as I said, it's a domestic size about six uh, cubic meters to 18 cubic meters in size, which is quite small, but maybe enough to sustain the energy requirements of a household. So we wanted uh, Venda University to ascertain that, to find out or to determine whether that is the case and to what extent that is the case and report back to the project and say, okay, this is uh, you know, feasible and if feasible, can it be replicated elsewhere? If it can be replicated, how do we replicate it in other provinces? So the work of Venda University was to cover the Limpopo province and uh, five districts in Limpopo, which can be listed. And those districts, they do include Capricorn as well. And so they are, you know, they are doing their work as we speak. They are, they are, they are determining, just what I said, is there a market? Is it feasible to produce biogas? Is it desired by the people who are targeted by that? At first, we, uh, I think we wanted to implement this project a few years ago. So what we did, we started by doing research, like getting to know who implemented it first. And then we went to various areas until we ended up at the University of Venda. We got this information from UNIDO while we were doing our research about who is implementing this project, where have they implemented it, and where was it successful. So, and then we wanted to implement it and we wanted it to be successful. We didn't want it to fail. So, we knew that the University of Venda implemented it in various areas. So, we approached them. We told them, you know what, we need to implement this project, we have a budget. So we partnered with the University of Venda and then they implemented the project on our above. The initial part of the project started from a bigger project which is funded by United Nations Industrial Development Organization 
which is part of a national uh, waste to energy conversion uh, uh, program. Right, this uh, uh, part which the University of Venda embarked on is on capacity building where technicians are trained to build, design, size these biogas systems. So the concentration or the focus is on Limpopo province where all the five districts we have got representative municipalities and villages where we go and train youth on the technology and put demonstration plans for the beneficiaries to show how these technologies work. So this project uh, is intending or has actually trained 17 youths from the villages of uh, Avon, Indamak and Ines. And out of those 17 uh, trained you know, youths, they all participated in building 13 units, 12 of which are of this size which we have here of six cubic meter size. And the 13th one is under commissioning, which is at the chief, and it is a 12 cubic meter uh, uh, size. So that can cook up to you know, three hours uh, per day if properly fed. So I can say uh, the project itself is a true application of science to solving problems in the community. As the community leaders of uh, Endermark village in what 12 Bloomberg municipality, we would like to acknowledge the University of Venda and the Capricorn District Municipality and our municipality for piloting this project in our village. This project is very much important to our people because uh, at first people were not aware that uh, dung from their cows can make gas and people can cook out of it. Even the farmers were not even aware that the plants, the waste from the plants they, they used to plant can be changed to gas and make people live out of it and save electricity. And as, 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 as we speak now, our, our communities here are very much happy. The beneficiaries are very much happy because it's changed their lives very much. People are now no longer going to take uh, wood to make fire. They have an easy way using gas from biogas digest. As an environmentalist, I think even myself, like I was like fascinated to see that, okay, you can actually use cow dung and turn it to, into energy. So, and that is science. And then knowing that our communities, like Capricorn District Municipality, uh, we are having a, a lot of rural areas, and then we are having livestock, like cattle. And then the cow dung was just like thrown away. We don't even know exactly how, but like now they can use it efficiently to produce energy that can, they can use in their household for cooking, for heating, given the price of electricity that is so expensive. Like this project of biodigesters, like our communities were very interested uh, from implementing this project. And even them, they couldn't understand, is this possible? Can we use cow dung really? to produce gas. So it is very important and it is improving the lives of the community. And on the other hand, it's also helping us as government and communities in reducing air pollution and the impact of climate change from using other energy sources which are not so clean as opposed to the biodigester project. <laughs> e mogwa wa biogas o ya ka rena re le moshato wa ba kamela le gatong last chapter e re bona e le mogwa o motse 
o le rena ro thagalelang e bile re bona ona le mogola mo challenge sa re e reng ke thome ka o le boa masipala wa rena wa blueback o re kwa pantsha le bo dr jinaro o to re tsibisa ka situation e be re sa itsebe re thomile re nya mile re sa tse bo rena ba re tise jae mara re ile ra fela ja rudu major ai ka re ke service delivery re tlo no bona re na service delivery yona ke mfutsa mang e ba thoma re botsa re ke program ya tsa ba ya maloko a di gomu a ra nyama ra se bo rena ke eng mara mafelelong re feleletse re bona e le botlhokwa kudu mo community ya rena mo lenna ke bone e botlhokwa kudu ka ba kala tshumiso ya rena e re wa ya mbi maka yona ka mutagase mutagase wa rena o wiki kudu ko monyane kudu kudu le mo le rengwe khona tsho khona wa ya chaba wa tsamae mara re khona o bona botlhokwa ba ba ege se o re ona o ra o re set lo re tlo bereka botse ka ba kala ro o lo sepela o nyaka malokwa le gomo a wa lekela wa ape ya wa laita lo ka maka di di ya khone ya so re bone di botlhokwa kudu mo ile re ngile re gopela o re nke be se ka ya felela ka ra metse ya re na 6 re na le tsona kwa ines re na jo mo moseng wa gale re be re gopela o re nke be mo thomo le lo tsola pele di tsole community ya re na mokhola ba ka idi ya ka moka mo moseng wa re na me bi ra ba le yona ka moka mo moseng re tlo no sala ntse re re stragela ka tsa ba maloko mara re tlo ba re khona ka re motse wa re na bontshuruile ene be re sa tse bo re tsa ba ya maloko e botlhokwa be re ne tse ba maloko e dilo ba dilo tsa maloko na ke ngwe sometimes re lo topa e le di studio mile ra o tsa ka tsona mo lora ape ya ka e le bona na ya rena e na le swaile erosion e ntse o sana methari re lo ba re a le felefelele so re bona botlhokwa bo bo le modi matsa ba ya stofose ka re o na le mo ba setseng ba se shumisha wona re le kwa a mr mathoding ka metharune o ya re ya re o tsheka re na o dia ya ba se shumisha kudu na ke e kholele nyane so shuma kudu ka mata be re sa tshe por maybe re ka khona u ja di kuku je di di wa nke ke stofa sa mfuta uwe be re tshe re maybe se tlo ro ba tlo ro wa pe ya ka tsona di jo jana tsa ngkhama loko e e di lo tsa ona di lukile ka moka tsona when implementing this project we are implementing it through the extended public works programs and also including the training of those beneficiaries and the trainees we are focusing on the youth of both genders and then yes in in terms of youth development i think it was spot on because um we had young women we had young men implementing this project and the skills were being transferred because they were trained some of them didn't know anything about constructing this biodigesters and now the skills are left there in the communities that we have piloted the project which means even though from our side it was a pilot project as the community see the successes of the ones that are being constructed more of them want them and that they can always go to the youth who were implementing this project and they can always construct that for them and then in blowback it's what it was very interesting like because we we also had like young women who were like really they were bricklayers they were doing the actual like constructing of the project so in terms of uh, employment and skills development we we are happy di eke ona eh biogas plant digester ya khasi re shumshang ya maloko ya these days then khasi le rena e ka mo fase ka mo underground and then ke ka mo ke ona e tshwarang eh maloko ka mo gare so and then this thing ke ona is our mixing tank more where we mix our maloko ona eh and then kamo go ke kamo go like ra shua ka ona mo go ra shua ka mo go maloko this is how we mix uh, our dunk here here chill and then ra tsela ka mo chele mezi ena ka mo then this is where we mix 
This is our mixing tank. Come, come, come. Chill, then yeah. while we are busy mixing uh Maloko Kamoko, Ata Mayaga, Funale Pipe, Eta Maya Mo, it's the pipe, like this pipe. Pipe, sorry, step. Pipe on a little ni it's a maisha molo, at like a mo uh mufas under the ground. So and then while it is busy Iberega. So it produces the it is the the slurry the 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 slurry and then the 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 There. Doesn't have water. So now we're going to go to the digester. So we're going to go to the house. And then we're going to go to the valve here. We open this valve. So. Right, so let me start from the beginning to this point where we are. Right, as uh, he has shown already from Outside, the chamber, which is the fermenter, is connected to an inlet, the mixing tank where they put in the uh, dunk mixed with water. Always the mixing ratio is one to one. If it is 20 liters of water to 20 liters of dunk, they mix it to porridge-like. Then they pour in. The chamber itself has a, a portion where fermentation takes place. And this fermentation produces the methane, which bubbles up the, the, the slurry inside the chamber. And as it is collecting on top of the slurry, it generates quite strong pressure. And that pressure uh, pushes the slurry to the outlet, the chamber which you have been shown, outlet. Then uh, we have a connection from that outlet to the compost chambers, those two tanks which we have at the end of the digester. Right, now when you see a lot of slurry going out, that shows that inside the digester there is a lot of gas. Then from there, we tap the gas from the top of the digester through a pipe coming to the kitchen. But before reaching the kitchen, we have got a water drain uh, point where we drain the water which accumulates in the pipe. Remember in the biogas, when it is produced, the biogas itself has methane and besides methane, it has water vapor. So when the water vapor cools in the pipe, you know, condenses into water and that water can block the gas. So we put a water drain where we uh, uh, make sure that that is the lowest point uh, uh, of the piping from the digester to the kitchen. So it means all the condensing water vapor from all sides will come and you know, accumulate at that point and we put a valve which we will always open to drain the water out. So from there then it comes to the kitchen and uh, here in the kitchen this is the stove now where we can see the gas burning. One thing which I want to uh, uh, emphasize is the quality of the gas. You can see we ended up putting uh, the, the, the covers for it to be properly seen and you can see that it is blue flame. This blue flame means it is very uh, high quality of you know uh, methane and the burning adjusted from uh, those knobs is a complete combustion. So here we don't have any other you know uh, uh, unwanted gases produced like the carbon uh, uh, monoxide and so on this is complete combustion. So it is actually reducing the, the effect of this uh, indoor pollution because of the clean gas which we are using. So uh, this now to the users, it has been really a great change of you know, their energy systems and their energy sources from firewood they have been using to now gas, which is actually coming from west 
and the West, which was supposed to be a menace, is converted into, you know, usable and important uh, source of energy. So I can say uh, this technology is really, you know, promising to give quite a lot of solutions to uh, community problems. So as you could have seen from the, the, the different encounters, you could see that the community is really for this project because it is actually, you know, assisting them to solve quite a number of problems which they had. This project, when we started it, uh, we said it's a pilot project. We wanted to see how our communities are receiving it and how sustainable it is. Like, uh, we didn't want to go on a mass implementation on a project before first knowing how the communities are receiving it, taking ownership of the project, because at the end of the day, if they don't take ownership, then the project is going to end up as a white elephant. So we wanted to see how it's working out. Are they continuing to feed the, di the biodigesters? Are they finding it very useful? So from there, that is when we will make a decision of rolling it out into other municipalities. Like I said, we started at the Polokwane local municipality at Mahoba village. The one at Blowback was the second one because we saw the one at Mahoba village. It was successful. The community liked it. And then we took it to Blowback. It was very successful. But because it, it, it's a pilot project, we planned it for two villages. And then our IDP processes, we have a project of planning for three years to five years. So we first started with this. Maybe in the outer years that are coming, we can think of rolling it out because we can see that it is successful. Capricorn District Municipality, University of Venda, Prof. Ginaro, really Ravona Elevo Toka or Udumela Project Emos Chavin Sar. If you will ever want our Evo Toka, Kumos Chavin Sar, Nakalava Kalawar, Evoncha Ele to Shamba to Kuru, a Villa Levelicha Tapor and Lamutahas, Kalava Kalaure, Legano Level Lamutahas or Narna, Lady Challenge Chedinchi, Moelo or Renale. Watata wa eh, load shady. Here, Shumisha yona biogas. Aro wal matata a load shady mo biogas. Sesungo le sesungo rwa na ele selebo fefukuru. Ore na ore rka chweleja eh, mollo ore na rachona wapi antele chitisho. Eh, re kemi sali che u shuma kaya na kudu kudu. In Tavisi Junk or Battery in Youth Yarri Navaswa. So Riverina Cauchola Pelelio, Naru Salarivi Jabasa, Amur Hoboke Jabasa Bangwe. Baba train, Rimba Valetsi Bovaska, Batsabo, and Abaliti. Then Bahono Sherry Labaswa Bangur Batabasibori. And Tom Futo, Nababa train a Lebon. Or Batabahono Salabina Litsi Bori, Ekataya Cholela. Escata Batimela Lausana Lernavis, Ton Lamatomo, Ebarivita Maspa Liberis, I wish she would not trick me. Eba bo lela ore ke 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 stuff a Saudi wa kamaloko. Ari nyaka ore ba soba re na ba khono se ba ore na dilote ka muka technology ana ba leki enchi na bil. Ba khono sala ba ba ruta ka yona ba ba leti se ba le matam ba tori fa yona uli ore dilote khone ile. Mutswa re na uka khona ba le sona ba smaka le ba soba re na ba ba traina ore ba ba leti se ba ya on. We are intent to making some campaign awareness to make sure that that people know that uh, each and every wasteful materials can be useful. We want the learners who took part in the learning program of the, constructing the biogas digester to train other learners so that people can change their lifestyle. And learners who are studying at schools, who are studying renewable sources, should come and see it practical that even the waste in their village is making use of them to make gas and is uh, workable 
they are cooking out of it. Rele ka lebele la di benefit ki tse dinchi. Sama thomo eh benefit ya mathomo ke a ora sechaba se khola ya kudu ka mollo re o shumisha ngwa biogas. Ko a mahala. Ka ba ka la ora letse bo gore mollo re o shumisha ngwe no ya boloko. A a a transport o thwaela di go mo ka mo le sakeng e di tsa ena o la boloko wa tshela ka ra nthwela mollo wa tuka montse a re ka moka ya bo be di benefit sechaba sa rena se na mile se khole ya le ka mmereko bana ba rena ba ba ithutileng o tswa mo bo eh bo professor Gennaro a mo le Capricorn district municipality e bo ntsha botse botse gore mo rena bana ba rena ba khumane mushomo so se o se ra hore re na ba lo mo re na ba lo ka sechaba re kholeile ka re le tala re feditse ya ra hore le ana mo motseng wa rena economy ya rena itlo ya oding ka le ba kala gore eh bana ba rena ba tlo ba ba kholeya ka malapeng ya bona ke benefit ye rena ba lo ka sechaba re thabelang e bile ba lo ka mushate re thushana le bana ba rena ba ba ileng ba khumana monyetla o elo re nge ba khona o dira yona ntho ya biogas gore le bona ba tswele pele mo di tshabeng tsa rena go thusha malapa mangwe a sna yona lo pole gore serilen ra sikhumana eh ke yona eh donation ya di biogas tse 7 eh six from the eh families one ka mo mshate so tshe go ka moka tsona ya lo ka mshate re promote gore ntho e tswele pele mo community ka moka yona re dumela hore ka le lengwe la matjatsi bana ba rena ba taba ba na le difeme tse lo re ba ikeme eh ka ba ka la tlhatlho ye tswang ko eh bo professor Gennaro le University of Venda le Capricorn District Municipality that is our benefit eh project re be re re nana hore maybe re ikhopela o Dr Gennaro le ba shumishane ba bona ba ri re le baswa ba rena ka hore ba be reke project e ke ya botse e bonolo re rata kudu baswa ba rena ke ba bantshi a ba be reke ba tsene dikolo mara ba duji fase mo haye so project e ba ka tswela pele ka yona o ba traina baswa bantshi ba tswela pele ba ba ruta maybe o na le yo mongwe a ka feletsa nga e dile le yana a phasa ka ra project e a ta ba ra khoebe kwa bo yena de na thwisa baswa ba bang e ya o wa mo la re bang le yona biogasi na se ke bona se tshentshi di kudu ke bona e gona o nthusha like e ke jaile furu ke nya ka o no dia di yonyana tsa ka pela di soft porridge le te awa e dia ka pela so ke bona e nthusha ka re kwa stofong kwa sa sa mthaga se kwa o kere se tsia nako ene mthaga se lona o ruli e ke ntwa ka e ke berekisang ke ntwa ka pela o pela ba rena bo tshentshi tshi it was come high re re ba tswa re ba ba tswa malanyana eh so very re 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 shumi sa mthaga sa 600 rand per month no re khona shumi sa wa bo 250 because re na le khas o ba ne ba tlapa ba ya skolong re shumi sa khas le mantsi ba ya wena cooking re shumi sa khas a wa e botlhokwa e botlhokwa kudu re wa tshaba ngwe le bona ba ka ba le bona ba e berekisa as this project has made a significant impact into our community. We want it to expand, to expand to such an extent that each and every uh, South African enjoy the benefit. So uh, economically, socio-politically, intelligence benefits of science and technology and innovation. I think the relations between policymakers and scientists is very important. Absolutely. Uh, as dynamics in the society change from time to time, usually as a result of failure to effectively and sufficiently diagnose the foundations of the problems using science, this then creates a gap. So it is important to use science by undertaking research that responds to actual policy needs. We are looking at uh, the background of the community itself, understanding the, uh, the need for certain solutions to be science-based. Uh, that in itself 
promotes uh, that collaboration between science and uh, the communities and the policies that would then be rolled out for those communities. It is important for a, a level of education to be quite high, to be high enough anyway, for the science part of it to be understood. And we are getting there, I, I suppose, where most uh, uh, communities do have young people who are scientific in their approach and are educated likewise. For policy to be effective, it has to be based on evidence. And therefore, scientists and science is extremely important in order to provide the kind of evidence uh, that policy should be based on. Frequent engagement with science community and civil society will bring us closer to building that culture of intersecting science and local solutions to local problems. The scientific community is moving towards the inter and multidisciplinarity pathways to understanding challenges that require scientific understanding, therefore working in collaboration with civil society will make a solid case for policy actors and implementers to adopt and diffuse innovations and also make use of science or research. We also need to not only undertake research in communities, but at times undertake participatory research together with them. And most importantly, to disseminate the findings thereof using indigenous languages. This would bring them even closer to us and also understand the importance of science. You find that uh, most communities want to be up to standard. You know, the rural communities compared to urban communities, there's a certain divide there that causes uh, a migration or a movement of youths away from the uh, not so challenging situations in, in, in rural communities. So if science is integrated and used in rural settings, it retains them in those communities that need the uh, local economic development. So local economic development should be based on science and attracting the youth to be involved in the, uh, you know, what's called STEM, you know, the, the, the science, uh, technology, engineering and mathematics type of situations where they feel at home because technologies of today are science-based anyway. So, you know, young people tend to migrate because they feel that there are greener pastures elsewhere. So if we bring that green of science to the rural setting, where most problems are, where most problems should be solved before people migrate to uh, overpopulated urban areas, it is uh, actually the best solution for that. Policy developers and policy implementers can strengthen their relationship with scientists by engaging them to undertake applied research to come up with very specific uh, findings to address very specific societal problems. And I think the gap between policy developers and uh, policy implementers and the science that is out there needs to be closed. Our scientists need to understand, especially our scientists at universities, that although there is for blue sky accountable to society, so for policy formulation, policy implementation, there needs to be far better engagement between policy implementers and scientists to undertake the kind of research that will achieve policy objectives. Implementation science is a good way to facilitate and encourage use of evidence-based approaches or interventions, particularly for policy and practice. In order to effectively assess that our science and innovation solutions are well targeted, we need to measure 
impact of these in innovations in communities where they are applied. South Africa and the rest of the continent are pursuing uh, aspirations of investing in science-led communities. As I said earlier, we therefore need to strengthen capabilities uh, for them to understand the kinds of innovations we produce uh, and their intentions. Importantly, the Human Sciences Research Council is prioritizing this objective of impact of research use. In terms of the implementation of innovation and, and research findings in local communities, one of the best examples of how we are having an impact in our communities is the project that we are undertaking jointly with UNI UNISA, uh, the CSIR, and funded by the United Nations. This is a project on the development of biogas digesters for rural households. And we are developing uh, pilot projects within local communities. These serve as demonstration projects to communities to see the potential of alternative energy generation uh, utilizing what is at hand in terms of household waste and agricultural waste. Now, through the impl implementation of this uh, biogas um, digester development, prototype development, and its implementation uh, in, in uh, pilot projects in communities, we have already provided 9,300 man hours of labor for unemployed youth in these communities, while at every demonstration site, we have managed to replace 26 hours of conventional energy use, either from electricity or through firewood um, and wood fuel, uh, replacing that with biogas. And that has a very direct impact on the lives of women uh, in rural areas because they bear the brunt of uh, energy security. They need to collect the firewood in areas that are becoming increasingly denuded of, of firewood. So our impact is measurable and it is direct. You see, it has quite, you know, very strong impact. Let me start by, you know, uh, uh, looking at the energy, the type of energy which we are getting from biogas. It is a clean gas. You could see from the flame which we saw in the previous, you know, a, a household. It's a clean, you know, energy, which is a replacement of a smoky environment kitchen where you are burning firewood and you have smoke all over. So the indoor pollution is reduced significantly by the use of biogas. That is one thing. The other thing, we are already avoiding the communities from you know, destroying the vegetation by cutting down trees for firewood. So what it means then is we are reducing deforestation by using you know, energy which is coming from the otherwise a menace west which was going to be troubling the the villages in managing it we are converting that west into usable commodities energy and fertilizer uh, you can see in many households they've got crows they change crows season by season why because they say this is full of dunk now it is too muddy, let's go to the other side and so on. But now, this time with the biogas digester, they are no longer going to do that because they are going to take all the cow dung, which is from the crow, in the digester. And when it comes out of the digester, it is even a, a more processed manure, which then needs to go to the field to you know, fertilize trees and so on. So in a way, we are hitting so many you know, beds using one stone. We are improving on our environment. We are avoiding deforestation. We are avoiding pollution by uh, avoiding burning of these uh, fossil fuels, which are dirty, by using a cleaner you know, way of energy, which is biogas. And this biogas being you know, produced from a conversion of waste is already a management 
a better way of waste management where you are actually getting good products from something which was supposed to be thrown away as waste. The biggest challenge which we see in communities, first looking at um, the affordability, of course this is a bit expensive. That's why we are saying it needs help of the government. If government can come up with a funding mechanism uh, where they subsidize the construction of these to uh, communities, then that way uh, that problem will be solved. But also, we have got challenges. We might want to see every household having this kind of technology at its you know, homestead. But it is difficult because it requires enough feedstock, which means enough cattle in the crop. So not every family has enough cattle. So we are even designing in our research groups, you know, models we are proposing to say, uh, if we can do a, a HAFA program, I know many people are aware of these programs, where government comes with a program where they give a HAFA to a family as a, a, a lending. So when that HAFA produces a calf, that calf is not for that family. It goes to the other family and so on. So we are like, you know, a giving more cattle to the communities. That way empowering them, making sure that they have got enough feedstock. And another problem is of water because this process needs water. For your own information, for feeding, start feeding, you need something like 5,000 liters of water to start the feeding. So it's a lot of water, all right? So uh, every day you will need from 20 liters to 30 liters of water to feed every day. So it is not easy for many communities, for many uh, households to, to have. Many households do not have bowls. But then what do we propose to mitigate this? Uh, you can see most of the houses, they are, uh, you know, tile or iron roofed so we can harness the rain and put in the tank. So if all these houses are gutted, all the rain collected and put in a tank, if you have a 10,000 liter uh, yo-yo tank filled by rain, you are almost assured of three quarters of the year daily feed of the digester without any problem if you use that water only for feeding. So we are saying we can couple the, 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 the project with a, this HAFA program and rainwater harvesting program. So that each household has a rainwater harvesting system and government can also assist in you know, increasing the livestock in the uh, communities. It is actually a, an important thing because then it's not only saving for the digester, it is actually in, increasing livelihood to these families wealth in these families because the moment they start to have their animals they will have more products from the animals. Uh, the other thing which I also uh, want to mention and maybe you might have also seen from the, 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 the households which we have already visited. The gas production depends on not only the feed, it depends on the feed and also the operation temperature. So the optimum operational temperature for this process to take place, we call it mesophilic level, which is around 37 degrees Celsius. It's not easy to reach, especially in winter. It is cold. So you would find even if you ask the, 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 the users, they will tell you when it was warm. Around December, when they installed, these digesters were installed around December. So from December, January, February, much they were getting very good stuff of gas but as it started to be colder the production goes down so this peak of winter we expect the minimum production of biogas so as another way of improving on that we can also incorporate heating of these digesters how can it be done though expensive but it can be solar heated. 
we can actually uh, use a solar water heating system which runs hot water under the, the digester to heat up the digester so that we raise the operational temperature to reach the optimum operational temperature of the level of mesophilic uh, to have optimum production of the biogas. So all these are uh, you know, uh, steps which we uh, uh, are working to improve on in some areas, but then we have to balance the economics to say, yes, scientifically, we can improve the system to this level, but we also need to look at the payback, I mean, the, 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 the cost benefit to say, is it really reasonable to use so much in trying to raise the temperature in order to get such a, 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 a given difference of production? Is it worth investing? in that. So uh, uh, scientifically we can improve it but then we have to be governed by the cost of that improvement. The project really has four components. That is the larger project, it has four components. The first component is capacity building and te technology support systems. The second component is biogas market development and regulatory framework. The third uh, you know, component is technology demonstration, and the fifth one is scaling up. So those uh, components are spread out throughout the country, or you know, there are institutions that are charged with capacity building and so forth. And the, uh, you know, the University of, of, uh, of Venda is in the first component, which is the uh, capacity building and technology support. So then what, what we are hoping to get out of that is uh, a, a sort of an integrated uh, approach to supporting the biogas industry as a whole in South Africa. The biogas industry in South Africa has been limping, not quite up and running yet. So we hope that with the support that we, we, we are giving and, uh, you know, of course, in conjunction with the government of South Africa, who are the counterparts in this uh, project, the Department of, uh, of uh, Fisheries, uh, Forestry and uh, Environment is our direct counterpart. We work very closely with them. So that then is, uh, you know, what we expect to support the industry with. The industry has an association of its own. It's called SABIA, Southern African uh, Biogas Industry Association. We work very closely with that as well. But the way we support uh, the project is through what we call co-financing. Co-financing involves us putting in some seed money through our support from Jeff and so forth. And then the people that we're working with in the private sector and government, they put in quite a big chunk as well to co-finance the project. So Capricorn, uh, you know, has supported this process. The, uh, the, the Capricorn District has supported this, this process very, very much and we appreciate it because without them it would be just the grant and the grant is not enough. It's only but maybe 10% to 20% of the total funding. The rest of the funding comes from others including the, uh, the, the private sector. As you can see this is a new technology to the community and it is expensive uh, communities cannot afford to, you know, put it themselves. So working together with the district municipality of Capricorn and the local municipality of Blueback, together with the traditional leadership, we teamed up to, you know, uh, motivate, raise awareness up to the level when our communities started understanding the importance of this project the importance of the technology to the solutions of the problems which they have. So that way it made us, you know, uh, go smoother because they, we, we built the best, we built the, you know, the, the confidence of the community on how the technology works. So it went through a series of awareness workshops, awareness meetings, uh, engagement, co-designing, you know, making them understand what exactly the project or the technology entails. And that way, 
uh, uh, we managed to start you know, the implementation without many challenges because of the background understanding the community has which we had raised. We did this project in two villages. The ones that you are covering in this documentary was the second one. We started at the Polokwane local municipality at Mahoba village. Uh, in that year, we contributed 600,000. And then in the following year, at the Blowback municipality for the two villages, the Avon and Enarmak, we contributed uh, 800,000. UNIDO's role in the uh, project, in particular with uh, respect to Venda University, is to assist or to support in financial terms the work that uh, is, you know, we wish uh, to be done in the domestic uh, digester you know, market. So what UNIDO does is to offer that support through uh, a, a grant a small grant that we, we, we offered to the, to, to the University of Venda. And they then uh, work with us, they report back as they are implementing. We quality control that process. And we, at the end, approve step by step, milestone by milestone on the work that they are doing. And UNIDO is not doing this on its own. It's supported by the Global Environment Facility, Jeff, as it is called. It's a UN uh, agency that does uh, funding. So it's a climate change funding type of uh, a, 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 an agency, green funding it is. So what, it is, what we are doing then is to use, uh, to, to be the implementing agent for, uh, for, 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 uh, for Jeff uh, in respect of this project. So as I said maybe earlier that it's a broader project. This is but you know, focusing on the domestic side. Our ambitions are to see this kind of technology taken to a national program. By national program, then it means a lot of input, conscious input from the government. I will give an example. If you look at how the solar home systems were taken by the government, uh, you know, the assistance which, you know, uh, it, it got you could see that government partnered with municipalities, with uh, you know, private you know, companies to make you know, concessions where households would have some assistance in acquiring these systems because the need for lighting and entertainment energy was seen. But if you look at the bulk of the energy which is used in households, is basically on heating, cooking and heating. So, the part which this technology takes is worth, you know, taken seriously by government. I want to applaud already the, the efforts shown by the district municipality of Capricorn where they had converted or used the EPWP uh, work, uh, extended works program money to this project. This project was actually funded from that. So our uh, uh, Ambitions is to see this happening in all these other districts where the EPWP money, instead of just taking people to go and maybe work in the roads, they are, uh, the money is put towards uh, uh, training of youths, uh, production of uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, structures which actually build skills in the youth and also sustainability in the youth because then after the program, these people, they can continue working independently, but from the skills which they got from the EPWP program. So we are actually uh, trying to motivate our districts, our municipalities to include among us all the other programs which they put in EPWP, the program of this waste to energy conversion technology in the households, looking at the benefits it has. It has energy, it has fertilizer which produces food and that way improve the livelihoods of the communities. We thank very much for uh, celebrating this uh, science week with us. Together we can make science work in our community. <laughs>